I had the men that would never, ever, ever let anybody know that they like she males. 50 million, 73 million, 100 million. That gives me chills. Fast forward all the way to what? Zola. I was a prostitute, but now I'm a television producer. Today, I'm meeting with T.S. Madison, who is a trailblazer in our community. She's the first black trans woman to star in and executive produce her own reality series, The T.S. Madison Experience. And on today's episode, we get into it all. Now let's meet Maddie. Say your name. Matthew Cullen. All right. Thank you so much. Back here and press seven. Thank you. Of course. You want check it out? And I said, well. Hello. Man. Hey. Hi. Nice. Uh, you say that. <laughs> oh, you got that money like that. Uh, yes. Oh my how gosh, are good. How are you? <laughs> oh my gosh, you are beautiful. Well, that's what they say on Fridays. Honey, what's the day? Saturday? I, I don't even know. Well, they, I, I got two flowers. Thank you, baby. Yes. Thank you. Thank I didn't you know your so much. I didn't know your favorite flowers. So I just picked out the prettiest well, ones. Well, I love flowers, honey. You know that makes it. It, it makes me feel like pussy. <laughs> You're not wearing the 22 inches today. It is, it's just curl. Okay. <laughs> Do you ever do like a pixie or anything like that? I have done pixies and stuff like that. I do find that pixies are, um, see I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a plus size girl. You know, I'm a girl that holds, that can hold a lot of meat on her bones. And so because of that, um, I, I tend to stay away from little short hairs that make my face look so full because I felt like that I have like this full, Fat face, but to be honest with you, you really don't. Though. I don't. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a rather, it's a, it's a pretty face. <laughs> I honestly feel like you could work like a short little like yeah, pixie I mean, moment. I can't, like, like, you know, there's a thing that I say that you have an any wig face, any wig face. Yes, yes, you do. I have an any wig face, like any wig that I, I can slide on, any hair I can slide on, and I can make it work, honey. I went to the doctor. I was like, bitch, give me the any wig face. It's, so you're doing a documentary? It's, on, it's a docu series on YouTube. And I've done like a bunch of different people, like I've done a couple other celebrities, mm -hmm. and I've also done some hustlers, and okay. I've done... Ooh, I like a hustler. I've done two working girls, and I, I love them so much. Like, I've done a couple of videos on both of them, and... Then you go to the queen of the, a queen of retired working girls. Every chapter of your life is truly, like, I cannot wait to talk to you about everything. You know, I don't think people really understand. I think they get in my presence, and they really don't understand the magnitude of being... A retired prostitute mm. and also not just a retired prostitute but being a very successful adult film actress and you know being successful in that field and then crossing into mainstream people really have no idea how difficult that is or how difficult it was but then you don't have a person like that that executive produced her own reality television series starred in it who executive produced and stars in her own talk show on a streaming service who's in major films with major studios for us to go over and start executive producing, creating, standing on the front lines and saying, hey, I was a prostitute, but now I'm a television producer. Is it on, honey? Is it on? What's up, YouTube land, Twitter land, Instagram land, Snapchat, Grinder, Scruff, BGC, Jack, Facebook, Periscope, and last but not least, every single one of my bitches Chorus Chun, Mingle, and the lands all across the land. This is your girl T.S. Madison, and I'm coming to you live, live, and always and forever in color from the Matt McCullen. Cullen. Wait a minute, I thought I gave him a whole Irish name. <laughs> Matt Cullen's docuseries. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you so much for taking well, thank time you. Listen, out of your busy schedule. Listen, thank you for considering me. You know, I, I, you know, listen, I say this all the time to people because as busy as I am, I'm always thankful for every opportunity that, that I receive. People really don't understand, like it's the people who have supported me over the years by just watching my YouTubes, Instagrams, however they found me, Facebook. Mm -hmm. He was trying to suck my titties and stuff like that girl or whatever and I had got real horny and I had got an erection in my pants. To me, you are the perfect person to be in the spotlight because you are open and you vulnerable and you know, you, you wear you your past it. on your sleeve and it's just so inspiring. You get it. There are people that don't get it. When you started going mainstream, was there people on your team, reps, that told you, let's not talk about... A lot of people said, Max, it's going to be difficult to sell you because people are not going to understand you. And that's still, even to this day, that is still a factor. But what makes you you is you being so unfiltered mm -hmm. and you being who you are mm -hmm. with your past and your present and your future. Listen, if you, if you take control 
and ownership of your past, nobody can use it against you. Nobody. So you grew up in the South. Mm -hmm. When in your life did you think, hmm, like I feel with my gender, like I feel like I'm not necessarily a boy? I would say 17. I wanted to be with men, but I didn't want to be with men as a man. Mm -hmm. I didn't want men to lust after me as a man because I felt like that they were gay. I'm 44 now. I rushed to tell people that because there was a time I didn't think that I was going to make it to 25. As a LBGT, all them fucking letters of color, free from the sex work prison, I do think it's a prison. Hmm. You know, it traps you mentally, it traps you emotionally, and it traps you financially. Because once you get accustomed to a certain amount of money, honey... <laughs> it's fast money. And it's a lot if you command it to be a lot. Do you remember your first experience? Oh, uh, I wrote about it in my... Uh, I wrote about it in a manuscript. Well, you have a book and you want to talk about it? or um, I'm working on it right now. Like The manuscript is actually um, being um, turned into something. Oh. Cannot wait for that. Yes. Are you going to be in it? I'm going to be... I might pop up as a aunt. But you're not playing yourself. Mm -mm. But you're executive producing that because mm -hmm. I know you are a boss. Mm -hmm. The way that I want the, the show to open up is with the first words that were said to me the first night at the, at that certain time. Because the manuscript, I've called it The Times He Loved Me. Hmm. And I document each time, 1235, 1237, 121. What were your feelings before hitting the streets for the first time? My feelings was, okay, now I'm involved in something that might kill me. Were you nervous? Oh, uh, yeah. But you felt like you had, this is what you had to do. You needed to make the money. What, I was gonna, what else was I going to do? I, like, I tried to flip burgers. I tried to mop. I tried to do all the things. I tried. That was not for me. Well, that's why I think it's so amazing that we have your voice because we haven't had anyone tell an honest story like that. A lot of times it can get glamorized or it can get, you know, written by people that weren't experienced in it like you experienced it. And it's going to teach us a lot. Like, I'm learning a lot through the girls that I'm being on my series, mm -hmm. and people are going to learn a lot through your show. I hope so. Movie, whatever it is. All of this stuff really happened to me. And, this, and it not just happened to me, it happened to lots of girls like me. But a lot of them died voiceless. They were murdered by the men, the police. Sad. They fucked us, killed us, raped. They did the same. They, they're men. Like, if you, mm -hmm. if you survived a summer, you a bad bitch. Did you find yourself in any scary situations? Oh, numerous. I remember me getting in a car with a gentleman. I had got robbed right before him. It was not exciting. It was like, give me your money. Oh, here you go. I felt like this guy was saving me. Because I'm walking, oh my God, just, uh, I said, I got in the car, I sat down, and I put my hand in the back seat. I was like, oh my God, I got to make sure that we good because, you know, it's a lot of crazy people out here. And he was like, like me. I was, and I looked forward because, you know, I was, I, had my, I was reaching my hand in the back seat, you know, to make sure that no one was laying on the back seat because they do that. They have other people hiding in the back seat to jump On the floor of the car. Whatever. And I was reaching back there. And when I looked, when I went for it, he, he, I said, oh, I just had to make sure there was no crazy stuff going on and he's like like me and i remember the gun being in the, in my face like this and i was like i just sighed like, oh god i just sighed and then he, he he drove off and he was like suck my dick i want everything every all the money that you have made tonight and i was like sweetie i just got robbed five minutes before i got in the car with you i don't have any money nothing he was driving with his hand like this the dick up, up like this, gun, this gun on the back of my, the side of my head like this, and it's like suck my dick. And you better not use no teeth. So I'm this. My palms are sweating, even just the thought of it. I'm that. good. Girl, you think your man in the bed sleep, or you think he's at work, he's out robbing queens. There was a baby seat in the back of this car. So bitch, you got somebody, you somebody's baby's daddy either this y'all your family car or something but you picking up transsexuals and you robbing them and getting blowjobs do you feel this responsibility being the public figure that you are to represent for these trans sex workers i do that's I a do. lot of pressure well it is because especially when people look at you from a place of like oh girl 
that's just sex work. Like, no, bitch, this happens. This happens. This ha it happens to cis women. The danger. The danger happens to women. I mean, even though it's better that you have a pussy and it happens to you than you be a trans, because then, you know, you know, you get justified if you, you rape a woman or you, you do something to a, a cis woman. You, you, There's no justice if it, it happens. You, you do it to the girls. Oh, now you got to live. You got to try to bury this. You, be you better bury the girl because now you're going to be gay. And you don't want that. Mm. We'd, we'd rather you be a rapist than a murderer. But gay? <gasps> no. Do you ever see girls on the street that come up to you? And, and are, do they all love you? Or do they have... I get a lot of girls that, that, that thank me for my journey and story and stuff like that. And thank me for always talking about it. Listen, when I got int introduced to the cyber sex world, <gasps> what was the street? What was that? What was a sidewalk? And what was $40? Honey, it started at 200. And you you made your own website, right? Mm -hmm. Bigdickbitch.com. Bigdickbitch.com. Dot honey. Legendary. Does it still exist? No, no. Well, I still own the domain and stuff. I don't. But you should just turn it into like a T.S. Madison fan site because that's just iconic. Yeah, but it's so it's so linked into sex that I just really wanted to. You don't need it. Mm -mm. Honey, I, I charge way more to walk in a room and wave now than, than any man could pay me to suck my dick. It's a different type of so money. you've always been this hustler. Mm -hmm. Always turning something into a coin. You got to. It's I, I wasn't gonna. I wasn't going to flip a burger. Not telling me, honey, that I was only worth $4.15 an hour. When a man came through there and told me, you got a big dick. Right. Let me suck it. And I got the price tag on that. Oh, bitch, I want a million dollars. I was going viral from my porn site, and I didn't even know it. How? How do you go viral? I had the men that would never, ever, ever, ever let anybody know that they like she males, trannies. Excuse me, the word was it's bad now, but this it made me a lot of money. So and they weren't tech savvy and computer savvy and stuff like that. A video camera come on in like what is going bigdigbitch.com oh and before we do that let's get you to sign this models release form you become a model now stand still let me take a picture of you filling out this thing with your id Bam. They're like yeah and just come have your fantasy those are all real ass men people would find clips like they'd find their boyfriends or they'll find their nephew or son or uncle or some straight man doing lewd and lascivious acts to my penis. And they would find those little clips of bigdigbitch.com and they would post them in group chats. And those people that you were having on this. That like their family members or somebody would find it. And I was like always, I have found videos of me that have millions. I don't mean like one million, two million. I mean like 50 million 73 million, 100 million views on it where they've been watched that many times. This is how people recognize me. Oh, excuse me, my boob. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, when did you get your first like gig on TV? When did you get your first agent? Or like, you know, when did you start really tackling Hollywood? Janiska Bravo and Brett Gelman were the first people from Hollywood to reach out to me. And they linked me up with Vice from HBO. And we were supposed to do a pilot. God, it was so awful. <laughs> really? Like, yeah, it was for HBO. Oh my gosh. And it did, like the day that it was supposed to, to do, we were supposed to start taping, it, it fell through. And Janiska said to me, T.S. Madison, I love you. One day I'm going to do something. This was like 2013. Fast forward all the way to what? Zola. Who's the director? Janiska Bravo. Wow. Like all those years back. And it was just like, fast forward now. And my little cameo spot in there was big in the it movie. It sold the movie. It sold the movie. No, no shade. It was big. That but gives me chills because like you just never know like someone in your path that you meet and then like 10 years later it's like boom. It happens. It happens. All of my celebrity friends that I have are not because I got in the industry. It's because they were they found a little six second video and they stayed with me. Like when I go take network meetings and things now for, for shows or whatever that I'm trying to pitch or something, whatever. I don't have to introduce myself. 
I do not have to introduce myself. And it's insane because sometimes they will always tell me, there was a little video of you years ago. And I'm like, oh God, that one? Which one? Which one? Which, 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 which. Where you're swinging your dick around. <laughs> yeah. Like that that one. Like, yeah, that was so funny. You know, it is my cunt. Charisma, uniqueness, nerve, and talent, talent that pulls the girls in. This is what I talk about when I say that I, I understand walking in your your extreme purpose. Mm. I get it. I get why I survive. There is a reason. So you can be here sharing your story yeah. and helping others. In an orthodox world, I am not supposed to be where I am or on the journey that I'm going. Because... It just don't happen. But when you are divinely ordered, whatever the divine has for you to do, it will get done. At nights when I've thought about all the turmoil and all the times that I've been robbed or I have been raped or I have been strangled or I've been, you know, made lots of money or I've I've had public spats and all this type of stuff, it don't got nothing to do with me. Nothing. I'm walking in my purpose. So I'm going to go to heaven when it's all over. You 100% will. We are lucky to have you, honestly. Uh, he's so sweet. And I mean it. And, you know, I think it does have something to do with you because I think not everyone could share their story in the way that you do. It makes me feel so emotional to think about how many people are going to learn and grow through having someone like you on our screens. Yes. Yeah. And to talk the raw about it. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's working! Oh my god, I'm nervous. Hello. Hi. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Felicia! Ah! Oh, Felicia, let me fix my wig, huh? Let me slide my wig to the front. Felicia! Hi, Pooh! What's going on? Thank you. Where you at, Felicia? I'm in LA. You in LA? Yeah. What you doing out here, girl? You know, I'm just, you know, hustling, bustling, trying to make a dollar out of this. <laughs> Girl, you still selling that good pussy to the men? Well, I just wanted to call and introduce you because I know, I like, thought maybe you loved TS and I just wanted to yeah, say. Oh, you like it. You like it, Felicia. Ah, yes, God, honey. Out of the scout, baby. <laughs> All right, I'll baby. you later. Okay, bye. bye. I like Felicia. Yes, she's yeah. so happy. Listen, I want to say bye, Felicia. <laughs> <laughs>